Would you believe that the Edwards Aquifer has been named the most vulnerable of all the major aquifers in Texas? And that's probably because the recharge zone has so many sources of pollution on it. There are houses, factories, roads, schools, stores, parking lots, and very, very little open land. Something we all need to realize is that everything we use in our lives, let it be shampoo, lawn fertilizer, gas for our cars, house paint, refrigerators, tires, shoes, clothes, plastic, all of it will end up in the environment at some point. Think about that next time you go to the store. At some point, everything in that store will go into a landfill or be consumed in some manner and be released into the environment. Let's follow the life of something bought at the store. It comes home in a plastic bag, it's taken out of its plastic and cardboard box, is used for a while until it's broken, and then it's thrown in the trash. What goes into the environment? The bag it came in, its packaging, and the item itself. This holds true for cleaning products, toys, clothes, electronics, plastics, food and cars, everything. Everything that you and I use will get thrown away at some point. And we need to be aware that these things can contaminate our water supplies. Any water on the recharge zone has the potential to recharge the aquifer. It has the ability to infiltrate into the ground and enter the aquifer. Why do I say potential? Why didn't I just say water on the recharge zone goes into the aquifer? Well, because some water on the recharge zone does not infiltrate. How is that possible? If South Central Texas was a grassy plain like it was thousands of years ago, I could say water on the recharge zone goes into the aquifer. But since we have replaced natural soils with concrete, asphalt, and buildings, water no longer goes directly into the ground. How did we reduce the amount of recharge that enters the aquifer? Well, we have reduced the amount of soil that water can move through by building things out of materials that water cannot move through. We used impervious cover that does not let water pass through. Instead of rainwater falling in the soil and infiltrating, it falls in a parking lot. It runs off into a concrete stormwater channel and then it is diverted into a river where it flows quickly off the recharge zone. So now we know that some water that falls in the recharge zone never gets into the aquifer at all. Now, what does the recharge zone in San Antonio look like? It's a sea of parking lots, big buildings, sidewalks, streets, and other materials that water cannot move through. It is all impervious cover and it diverts water into rivers and carries it away before it has a chance to infiltrate and enter the aquifer. So what things are impervious? Concrete, asphalt, houses, buildings, parking lots, and anything else water cannot infiltrate through is impervious. So today we have less and less pervious cover on the recharge zone that allows water to infiltrate through it. Permeable equals pervious. If water can move through something, it is permeable and so it is pervious. Pervious things include gravel and grass. Basically, rain that used to fall in pervious cover now falls on impervious cover and runs off into rivers instead of infiltrating. So natural things are pervious, man-made things are often impervious. The last thing I want to talk about is where pollution comes from. Point source pollution is pollution that comes from a single location, like a factory, like a sewage treatment plant, like a power plant that puts much pollution into the environment. These sources of pollution are easy to identify. Non-point source pollution, on the other hand, is more difficult to deal with. As you probably guessed, this is pollution that comes from everywhere and not just from a single source. In our neighborhoods, we put chemicals in our lawns to make them greener. While these chemicals might make our yards look green, we are introducing lots of chemicals in the environment. And what if every single yard is fertilized? Then the chemicals come not from a single location, but from all the houses in a neighborhood. We call it non-point source pollution. Point source pollution is easy to control. If a factory is polluting nastiness into the world, we can shut it down. But if a neighborhood is polluting nastiness, we have no way of even knowing it. We have no way of knowing which houses are polluting and which aren't. In this manner, non-point source pollution is much more difficult to identify and stop.